Hello and welcome to our first lecture video. In this video, we will discuss the interactions between science and technology and society throughout history. We will also discuss how scientific and technological developments affect society and the environment. The word science probably brings to mind many different pictures like universe, plants, cells, animals, microscope, scribbled equations on a chalkboard, space rockets, and some sorts. All of those images reflect some aspect of science, but don't provide a full picture because science has so many facets. According to Understanding Science website, science is both a body of knowledge and a process. In school, science may sometimes seem like a collection of facts listed in a textbook, but that's the only small part of the story. Just as importantly, science is also a process of discovery that allows us to link isolated facts into coherent and comprehensive understanding of the natural world. Science is also exciting. Science is a way of discovering what's in the universe and how those things work today, how they work in the past, and how they are likely to work in the future. Scientists are motivated by the thrill of seeing or figuring out something that no one has before. Science is very useful. The knowledge generated by science is powerful and reliable. It can be used to develop new technologies, treat diseases, and deal with many other sorts of problems. Science is ongoing. Science is continually refining and expanding our knowledge of the universe. And as it does, it leads to new questions for future investigation. Science will never be finished. Science is a global human endeavor. People all over the world participate in the process of science. Now, according to Collins Dictionary, technology refers to methods, systems, and devices which are the result of scientific knowledge being used for practical purposes. Technology is a branch of knowledge that deals with creation and use of technical means and their interrelation with life, society, and the environment, drawing upon subjects such as industrial arts, engineering, applied, and pure sciences. Technology uses science to solve problems, and science uses technology to make new discoveries. However, technology and science have different goals. The goal of science is to answer questions and increase knowledge, while the goal of technology is to find solutions to practical problems. Although they have different goals, science and technology work hand in hand and each helps the other advance. On the other hand, what are the implications of science and technology to society? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, society is an enduring and cooperative social group whose members have developed organized patterns and relationships through interaction with one another. This is a community or a nation or a broad grouping of people having common traditions, institutions, and collective activities and interests. Now, since science and technology are essential criteria for any flourishing society, especially in today's search for knowledge-based economies, if nations struggle to adopt science and technology, then the chances of improving themselves become small and therefore may even be listed as an undeveloped country. Science and technology have profoundly affected society and its effects is on the rise. With the aim to improve our way of life, science has given us the ability to address social issues such as economics, architecture, health, communication, and transportation. Understanding the history of science and technology is also important. In the TEDx talks presented by Hanu Rajanemi, a mathematical physicist, science innovator, and writer entitled The Big History of Modern Science shows how our understanding of science changed over time and these changes greatly affect our lives and society. He discussed his belief that science and technology are amongst the most important factors driving societal change and that modern physics is full of beautiful ideas that resonate with stories he would like to tell. Progress at some point is often related to technology, and where there is progress in research, technology occurs. The research, technology, and growth are also equal to each other. Growth in every person to a nation is needed in all respects, and science and technology go hand in hand for growth to happen.
Now that we know science and technology greatly affect a nation's growth and the society as a whole, how about we think about this? What were the needs of ancient humans which led to development of science and technology? The first reason is ancient humans' need for transportation. Since the development of the world's earliest civilizations, people have needed to move themselves and their goods from one place to another. As world populations have grown over time, so has the need for better and more advanced systems of transportation. So transportation is the movement of goods and people from one place to another. In ancient times, people crafted simple boats out of logs, walked, rode animals, and later devised wheeled vehicles to move from place to place. They used existing waterways or simple roads for transportation. Over time, people built more complex means of transportation. They learned how to harness various sources of power, such as wind, steam, and combustion, to move barges, ships, trains, automobiles, and airplanes. And these new means of transportation required people to change their environments by building transportation infrastructure. Transportation infrastructure is the underlying system of public works designed to facilitate movement, like roads that we have today. Now, here's a timeline of the development of some of the modes of transportation we have today. Do you know that the first wheels were not used for transportation? Evidence indicates that they were created to serve as potter's wheels around 3500 BC in Mesopotamia. That is 300 years before someone figured out to use them for chariots. Now, the magnetic compass was first invented as a device for divination or divination as early as the Chinese Han Dynasty and later adopted for navigation by the Song Dynasty Chinese during the 11th century. The oldest boat naman to ever have been recovered, the Pese Cano, is believed to be from the early Mesolithic period from around 8,000 years BCE. Now, on September 19, 1783, Pilatre de Rosier, a scientist, launched the first hot air balloon called Aerostat Revelion. And the archetype of the bicycle was the German Dreisen. Dresden, I'm not sure. No, but it was dated back in 1817. So that was the first bicycle or commercialized bicycle. On the 21st of February 1804 naman, the world's first steam-powered railway, railway journey took place when Trevetix, a named steam locomotive, hauled a train along the tramway of Penydaren Ironworks near Mertier Teddyfield in South Wales while the first successful internal combustion engine was created by Samuel Brown in 1823. But it wasn't until 1877 when Nicholas Otto invented the first four-stroke cycle internal combustion engine that the prototype of the modern engine was invented. So kung meron tayong mga modern engines ngayon, yan ang pinagmulan, yung four-stroke cycle internal combustion engine by Nicholas Otto. And Henry Ford naman built his first experimental car in a workshop behind his home in Detroit in 1896. After the formation of the Ford Motor Company, the first Ford car was assembled at the Mack Avenue plant in July 1903. And five years later, in 1908, the highly successful Model T was first introduced. It was one of the first mass-produced vehicles in the world. In the ancient times, it was also important for humans to communicate. So long before the earliest writings of the Sumerians and the Egyptians were developed, people communicated with, with each other by a number of different methods. Early humans could express thoughts and feelings by means of speech or by signs of gestures. For instance, they could signal with fire and smoke, drums or whistles. While paper was invented around 100 BC in China, in 105 AD under the Han Dynasty Emperor Ho Ti, a government official in China named Chai Lun was the first to start a paper-making industry. Johannes 
Gutenberg is usually cited as the inventor naman of the printing press. Indeed, the German goldsmith's 15th century contribution to the technology was revolutionary, enabling the mass production of books and the rapid dissemination of knowledge throughout Europe. While the telegraph revolutionized long-distance communications, the telephone, meaning far sound, is the most widely used telecommunications device. It was invented in 1876 by Alexander Graham Bell together with Thomas Watson. Ancient humans also need tools, weapons, and armors. Anthropologists believe that the use of tools was an important step in the evolution of mankind. Humans evolved an opposable thumb useful in holding tools and increased dramatically in intelligence which aided in the use of tools. The stone tools of early humans, on the other hand, were convented or converted into more versatile tools and weapons, and military technology brought the development of metal plates for armor. And of course, it's, it's also important for ancient humans to conserve life. So prehistoric medicine refers to medicine before humans were able to read and write. It covers a vast period and varies according to regions of the world and cultures. Anthropologists study the history of humanity and have yet to discover exactly how people practice medicine in prehistoric times. However, they can make guesses based on human remains and artifacts that they find and on the way of life we see in some remote communities today. We can be fairly sure, however, that people in prehistoric times would have believed in a combination of natural and supernatural causes and treatments for conditions and diseases. The invention of medicines dates back to centuries. It was around 3000 BC that the Egyptians are used or used remedies to fight diseases. And they also perform basic surgeries by general examination of the patient and mainly the guesswork and magic work. In Greece, Hippocrates naman was considered as the father of the medicine. He was the one to classify diseases and the first to perform the chest surgery. Before, French chemist Louis Pasteur began experimenting with bacteria in the 1860s, people did not know what caused disease. He not only discovered that disease came from microorganisms, but he also realized that bacteria could be killed by heat and disinfectant. This idea caused doctors to wash their hands and sterilize their instruments, which has saved millions of lives. Yung antibiotics naman are powerful drugs that kill dangerous bacteria in our bodies that make us sick. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered the first antibiotic he called penicillin, which he grew in his lab using mold and fungi. Without antibiotics, infections like strep throat could be deadly. And the last but not the least is ancient humans need for engineering and architecture. Architects and engineers often design and build structures inspired by the Earth's natural formations and shapes. This was also true for the ancient builders that built pyramidal structures and platforms with broad bases and uh, tapered sides, inspired in most cases by the hills and mountains they saw around them. While many societies built them, pyramids and platforms across different cultures were not all alike, differing in shape function and construction materials and techniques. The construction of these monumental structures took many years and involved thousands of people. Ancient builders used the materials available to them. For example, the scarcity of stone in ancient Mesopotamia led the, the builders to use bricks made of mud to build their platforms called ziggurats, while the Egyptians used locally available limestone and granite for their pyramids while the Mayan or the Maya used both stone and earth. And Mississippian cultures in North America often built their mounds entirely from dirt. It is clear from the archaeological evidence and monumental size of these structures that they were built by and for powerful rulers and leaders. The buildings were meant to honor the gods and the kings who commissioned the construction. Whether they were used as thumb or as platforms for temples, 
pyramids and platforms are testaments to the ingenuity of the ancient architects, engineers, and builders, and also to the power and wealth of the rulers who could afford to build them. And that's all for this video. In the next video discussion, we'll talk more about the development of science, technology, and society in the different historical periods. See you there!